Our big break in this was when we examined Dennis' cell phone records. There was a phone call that Dennis Potts received within minutes of the murder occurring where he, his phone was pinging off a tower which was located 600 yards from Tory's apartment. That proved to us that Dennis was near that apartment at or near the time of the murder. With the text messaging, with his computer searches, with the fake paternity testing, we believe there was enough probable cause and we arrested Dennis Potts for the murder of Tori and Dean. I always knew Dennis was capable of some pretty awful things. Turns out murder was one of them. When Dennis was arrested, he made no statement to law enforcement. But I believe our investigation painted a pretty clear picture of what happened that evening. Dennis arrived at that apartment. He didn't have any intention to take Tori out for dinner. Tori was looking forward to seeing him and let him in. Once inside, Dennis attacked Tori, hit her in the head with a flat iron, dazed her to the point that he was then able to take the cord from the flat iron and strangle her to death. He then tore her clothes and, in my opinion, staged to make it look like a sexual assault. He then went into the bedroom and found Dean in the crib and then strangled him. One of the last things that Dennis does is erase text messages that Tori had received from him. I knew I could take care of my son on my own. That was always my plan. But Dennis had his own plan, and it had nothing to do with being a dad. Dennis Potts murdered my daughter and my grandson, his biological son, so that he could erase what was inconvenient in his life. 